Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Now, I'm going to discuss further into hyperbolic functions and now look at graphing sinh of x or hyperbolic sine of x. It's going to be very similar to my earlier video on graphing hyperbolic cosine or cosh of x. So let's just jump right in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let y equals to sinh of x like this. And now first thing we're going to do is well recall the definition of sinh is just equal to e to the x minus e to the negative x as I showed in my earlier video. So that's just a definition and now what we'll do is first thing that I like doing is taking the limit as x approaches infinity of y which is sinh of x. Now this equals 2 when we put that inside we get limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x. But now what I'll do is I'll flip this as usual what I do just so it's easier to deal with so 1 over e uh, to the negative I'm, I mean 1 over e to the positive x just to get rid of that negative sign because we're going e to the infinity uh, like that so what we'll do is again I'll just put a note here note that this with exponent properties e to the negative x is equals to 1 over e to the x like that and you can learn more about the exponent laws in my earlier video so now we have this one there now as x approaches infinity, here we get an e to the infinity that just goes to infinity. Now here we get a 1 over infinity, which approaches, well, 0, like that. So what we have is infinity minus 0 divided by 2, and then that's infinity divided by 2 is still infinity. Doesn't matter if you <laughs> divide infinity in half, it's still infinity. So it reaches positive infinity like that. Similarly, when we look at limit as x approaches to negative infinity of y, which equals to limit as x approaches infinity, uh, negative infinity. But now since we're dealing with a negative, I want to flip over this one so it's easier to see where it goes. So we're going to put this 1 over e to the negative x like that. Just flip that over. Minus this one which is going to remain it the same because of this negative there. So we have e to the negative x like that. Over 2 is, is what I like doing here. So now we have a 1 over infinity. The negatives cancel. So this is a 1 over infinity goes to 0. Here we have just, uh, because the negatives cancel, just, this just goes to infinity. Like that. I'll get rid of uh, the line there. Okay, so I just wrote it a bit better. Like that. So now we have 0 minus infinity divided by 2. But now we have a minus, so that just means it's going to be the exact same thing, but with a negative sign. So negative infinity like that. So that's very, very interesting. So from the left side it goes to negative infinity and then on the right side it goes to positive infinity. So now the next step we'll do is look at the critical points and you can learn more about graphing uh, following the guidelines that I showed in my earlier videos on guidelines to sketching curves. You can see those and I'll put the link in the description below. Yeah, if you want to go uh, in a more step-by-step -step method. This is what I like doing. I just like doing the finding the limits to infinity and then looking at the critical points. So first thing we'll do is find the derivative y prime equals to, well, dy over dx. This just equals to, when we look at it, the derivative of sinh of x equals to, well, e to the x derivative is just e to the x minus, and now we have, yeah, the derivative of e to the negative x. Well, that is e to the negative x, and then the negative goes down, but since we have a minus, yeah, the negative becomes a positive there. And then again, there's a divided by 2. And now this just equals to, well, cosh of x by definition, as I showed in my earlier video. So very interesting uh, indeed like that. And also now when we take the second derivative, we have, this is in Lebanese notation, d squared over dx squared like that. And uh, put in this in uh, over here. So when we take the derivative of this one, e to the x derivative is just going to be uh, itself e to the x. Now here we have e to the negative x derivative becomes, uh, well, e to the negative x and then put the negative down so we have that negative x like that using chain rule because the derivative of negative x is just negative 1 divided by 2 like this. Now this equals 2, well, this is just sinh. <laughs> so that just equals to sinh of x. So which equals to, well, well, y. <laughs> That's just equals to y. So that means y is equal to y double prime the second derivative. Very interesting. Now usually what we, what we uh, do is to find the critical points we look at when uh, y prime is equal to 0. But now what we have is, well, uh, this is equal to the derivative there, e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2. 
Yeah, but this is actually not possible because notice everything is positive. Not possible right here. And this is uh, because, and I'll put this here, so uh, e to the x, this is always going to be greater than zero. Doesn't matter, what, doesn't matter what you put inside, e to a negative number, it's still going to be, well, greater than zero. And now here, e to the negative x, same thing, it's going to be greater than zero. Yeah, so thus what we have is the derivative y prime is greater than zero. And this is for, well, all real numbers of, uh, of x. Doesn't matter what x is, the derivative is going to be greater than zero. So yeah, it is always increasing. But what we'll do now is look at when the second derivative is equal to zero. Maybe we can get an inflection point. So when uh, y double prime is equal to zero, what we end up hap having is, well, this is equal to e to the x. This number, this is just cinch of x, which equals e to the x uh, negative, uh, minus e to the negative x over two. And we could uh, cancel the two out and move it, move it aside. Uh, time, 2 times 0, 0. So then we have, and then let's move this over to the other side. What we get is e to the x equals to e to the negative x, like that, ln both sides, e to the x equals to ln e to the negative x. So what we have now is, well, uh, just using the logarithmic property so that the, yeah, so that the ln and e's cancel, we have now x equals negative x. And for completeness sake, as you can already see that x equals zero, let's move it over. And now we get a x plus x equals to, well, a zero, which equals to two x. And again, so this just means x is equal to zero, like that. And at, um, yeah, at y of zero, this equals to, or I'll just put this like this, at y of zero, whereas uh, x is equal to zero, to see, this is an inflection point. This is equal to, well, we know the um, function uh, cinch is just that, which equals to as well the second derivative. Plug in zero, e to the zero minus e to the negative zero is still uh, zero, divided by two. This equals two, e to the zero is equal to one, minus one over two, one minus one is just zero, so it equals to zero like that. And then put these together, we have the point uh, zero, zero, and this is an inflection point. Yeah, put this down, an inflection point, and we'll see that as well. Uh, whoops, let's put this better like that. And we could even see this when we take the, uh, I'll just write a note for here. So note that the y double prime is equal to just y. So thus what we have is uh, we could, instead of just picking a number for y double prime to see if it's positive or negative to the left and to the right of x equals to zero, as I usually do, what we'll do is look at the limit as x approaches infinity of y double prime. This just equals to, well, limit as x approaches infinity of y, because those already equal each other. And this one, as I showed above, equals to positive infinity as above. And then uh, similarly here, limit as x approaches to the negative infinity of y double prime, this equals to limit as x approaches negative infinity of y, which I already showed above is negative infinity, like that. So, uh, so yeah, the the inflection or the concavity changes, and here is that derivative here I showed here. So infinity and negative infinity, like that. Yeah. So thus, what we have is thus, if we draw just an x. Uh, axis like that, and then at this point is our inflection point. Here is at x equals to zero. So at this point, we have y double prime equals to zero, and then to the right of it, we have as x is approaching infinity. Well, uh, to the right of it is always going to be positive. It's a continuous function, so we have uh, y double prime is greater than zero. But then to the left of it, we have y double prime is less than zero. In other words, we have on the left side concave down. So concave downwards, and then this uh, on the right side we have it concaving up like that. And there's the inflection point where the concavity changes at x equals zero. So concave up like that. Yeah. So finally, if we put this all together, yeah, if we put this together, what we end up having is I'll just write finally. So put this together. There's our x or there's our y. Is our x and y axis like that? So we know that y, uh, yeah. So we know that the inflection point is at zero, zero at the origin. 
So we start here, and that the derivative is always greater than zero. So what we have is it looks something like this. It's not going to be a flat li uh, horizontal line. And then it is, it's going to be concaving uh, up. Let's draw that a bit better like that. So let's draw this one more time. So it's going to look something like this, concaving up. And then on the, on the other side, it's going to be concaving down like that. And this is our function y equals to cinch of x like that. And also at this point, we have y prime is greater than 0. And that y double prime, well, this uh, equals to 0. So that's an inflection point. So yeah, very, very interesting like that. And this is going to negative infinity, and this is going to infinity on the right side. Very interesting. But now what I'll do as well, let's compare with a cubic function or an x cubed like that. Here I've graphed, graphed it with Desmos calculator like here. And I showed that, well, here is it in red like this. There's that non-zero there, and there's the flat line for x cubed, because that derivative is zero or a horizontal slope. And notice it's uh, more broad for the cubic and then becomes more steep than the Cauch function. But this is, this is a note for only small values. So at x equals to zero, the slope is zero for x cubed, whereas the slope for the cinch x uh, is greater than zero. Yeah, let's put that uh, down in writing. So it's greater than zero here, and you can see that clearly. And also note how x cubed is more broad initially, and then becomes more steep than sinh uh, of x. But uh, here's an important note again. This is only for small values when you scale it up. So now, as with my last video on cosh x, let's change the scales up a bit. So here is just dealing with uh, just equal scales, negative two to two. Now we go to the thousands, and notice how it intersects again. So cinch becomes uh, more steep. So initially, it's more steep, then more broad, and then becomes more steep like that. And uh, let's just go play around with it and see how steep it gets. So let's just click this. So it's uh, loading here. OK. It's going to click this projector mode. And so yeah, the red is in. Yeah, so the red, the red is the cinch. And then when you uh, zoom out of the vertical one, notice what happens are quite amazing. And zoom out. Yeah, there is it. It crosses it again. So you have initially the cinch is over here ab above. It's more steep and then becomes more broad there and then zooming out even more when the scale changes. This is actually one of the best properties of hyperbolic functions. So now it crosses it like that. Let's just change the scale even more to see it clearly. Look at that at the thousands. Now you go to 2,000. And then the uh, cosh function is way more steep. And it barely changes uh, horizontally relative to the relative to the horizontal. I mean, relative to the vertical right now. That scale is 5,000. There's 5. And then the cubic one is, uh, yeah, it's becoming flatter and flatter. Now you go even more. Let's go to, <laughs> this is 100,000. And notice how now it's becoming a flat line almost at the low end for, uh, for the cubic. And then the, uh, and then the hyperbolic one is going way more vertical. And let's just change the scale up even more. <laughs> this is amazing. This is literally a flat line like that. Uh, but then, uh, yeah, the cubic one is still uh, somewhat steep like that. But relative to the Cauch one, it's nowhere near. That's absolutely amazing how this curve looks like. And it's barely changing. The uh, ver on, on the horizontal one, it's barely changing, even though these uh, ver the y values are in the hundreds of thousands like that. But nonetheless, the x values still go to infinity, actually. So there there is no uh, vertical asymptote. They still get larger and larger, but relatively very small relative to the other one. Let's just do some more zooming in. I'm just going to zoom back in. So yeah, just zoom back in here. And now what I'll do is if you zoom out the uh, <laughs> horizontal one, uh, now it just becomes a flat line, as it should. OK, it's going back here. So yeah, anyways, go play around with that. Calculator is absolutely amazing, Desmos calculator. So anyways, let's just go back to uh, the notes that I wrote. So notice how for larger values that cinch uh, of x crosses the x cubed uh, line and then becomes more steep like that. So it crosses it across there. Very, 
very fascinating. Let's go to this is a different scale now, thousand, two thousand. Other ones in the uh, yeah, this is still in a thousand, two thousand. Yeah, actually, I quickly uh, updated this uh, this this chart because I realized it was the exact same as this one there. So I updated it here. I updated it here actually uh, to get to the ten thousand scale as opposed to the typical one what was in a thousand. So as you can see here, it's becoming more and more steep. Uh, like that and then the difference becomes more and more noticeable now when you go to the 50,000 it's even more so cinch of X keeps appearing more and more steep as the Y values are scaled up and now here this this is at the how many zeros that's that's actually at the millions right there so you know when you go to the millions it becomes uh, pretty much like a horizontal line at this low end of the X values but again uh, X cubed still rises a bit which is pretty pretty interesting. So no, notice that as the scale gets increased even more we get the hyperbolic values so steep that it makes the cubic functions appear horizontal. That's actually amazing. Also note how uh, the cinch of x increases greatly for very small values of uh, small changes of x while at the same time cinch um, of x is defined for all values of x and thus there is no vertical asymptote. This still gets more and more further and further to the right. Notice that red there is past the 10 here is below the 10 so it, it does actually change so you don't actually have a vertical asymptote there is no vertical asymptote it keeps crossing it albeit very slowly so this is actually one of the main properties of hyperbolic functions in which I may cover some useful applications of it in the future so stay tuned for that anyways it's all for today hope you learned and again make sure to play around with that decimals calculator quite amazing anyways hopefully you enjoyed and uh, follow through this uh, sketching of this uh, cinch or hyperbolic sine function. It is all for today. Thanks for watching. Like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below, as well as viewing these notes on Steemit. There, follow me at MES. Also, make sure to check out my math forums and post any cool math or science related stuff you find. Anyway, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.